Hello and welcome. On this video, we're going to continue talking about the web API. I'm using the AdventureWorks database sample. And what I have done is I created a table. Um, I don't want to add data to these other tables. So I'll just keep it simple. And I added my own table, YouTube Web API. And I only have two columns, three columns, but the one is the primary key. So I'm going to be adding a name and a department. And as you can see, I already have one entered here. So to get started or to follow this tutorial, make sure you have your table ready and wherever your database is at. Then the next thing you need to do is um, go back to your entity framework and make sure you add it like I did. So make sure you do update model from database and select the table that you want to add. In this case, I added the YouTube Web API table. And that's it. The next thing you need to do is come back to your Web API controller. And it's very simple. What you're going to need to do is by default, you're not going to have this object here. You're going to have this form body instead of this object. So what I did is um, the same object, the same table that we have, this guy, we're going to use it to pass it. So we're going to type it here and we'll let uh, the MVC um, capture the object. And as you can see from here, we can start pulling the properties for that object. And this is just standard entity framework. Add it, add an object. You know, initialize the object right in here. Pass the properties, values, and save it to the database. And that's on the API, the controller. Now on the on the client side what you need to do is first thing you need to do is add a script tag or block and uh, we don't need this you could if you're using if you want to use jquery dot click so you can know when this save button is click in this case i'm going to show you how you, you can use a regular button and on the click add employee as you can see here so there's two ways of doing it it's up to you i'm just going to leave it like this for now it works kind of both same thing so let me fix that okay so what i've done here is we have a function at employee now as you can see here i'm building what i'm going to pass to the controller so this is simple, jQuery, getting the value for the text box for each and assign it to this variable. And finally to the employee object here. Now then you need to write an Ajax call. And remember that the controller is expecting a post. So we need to have the type of post. Uh, this line is really this whole thing is really important because if you don't follow these same steps It's probably not gonna work So this is how you pass the object and this is the type that you're passing on and Here we can just delete this We can actually I don't need none of that. I'll just leave it like that And that's it Obviously, here you can have the controller return something back to you. And this, I'll just leave it blank. And finally, we have a simple uh, text boxes. So we got a we got a name, department, and then we finally got the the click button. So we're gonna run it. So go pages. Web API post data. Here we're gonna type uh, John counting and click. 
click save. Now you won't see anything happen because we haven't set up none of that. The whole idea is to see if it, this calls actually works. So if you're using Fiddler or another tool, you can see that your form did pass, your Ajax call pass the values that we put on, and we have no errors out from the controller. So that means it worked. So there's no nothing. We're not returning anything, but if something went wrong, you would see it in this section. And it's it's not red, so that means it's also good. Now, if we go back to the database, did this actually work? As you can see, it's there. So it's nice way of pushing from the client using AJAX uh, to your web API. So that's all it is for this video. Thank you for watching.